welcome back to my channel. Also, welcome if you are new. We are going to a new house today. Um, this is someone that had messaged me. She is on um, oxygen 24-7. So, with that, I can you can only imagine someone that has like 47% lung function is what she told me. How difficult it is to get around and get stuff done. Um, she's also suffered from multiple heart attacks, um, cancer, which is why her lung function is as bad as it, it is. The chemo destroyed her lungs, um, and for the most part, she says she's pretty good at staying on top of things, except when it comes to her bedroom and her bathroom. Um, I guess there's a lot of dust, and she just can't get to it herself, so... We are going to go over there and we are going to give her a helping hand and hopefully not only give her a clean room, but make her quality of life a lot better by helping her breathe because breathing in all that dust and debris and stuff can't be helping the situation. So we are going to head over there and get started. About you. It's hard for you to be true. Oh. Every time you flash your name Always leaving Then you got me chasing you Like I'm the one to blame So I always get asked like how to start when you're dealing with a big project like this and I also enjoy these type of projects because I feel like it shows a different setup because um, some people can't relate to my house so maybe this setup is more relatable to your bedroom. Um, so my goal was to start on one side of the room. This is her side of the bed. I was going to her husband's side last because his dresser and stuff, he hadn't cleaned off or anything. Um, and she said not to touch it, not to worry about it. it. Had a lot of his medications and things like that. So my primary focus was on her side of the room. Um, and then going in as much as possible on his side without moving things around. So that is what I'm doing. I'm starting in this corner. Um, the bedspread, she said, don't worry about it. She's gonna, she was going to throw it in the wash when I was all done for the day. Um, which I always like. I like using my bed as like a catch-all. So as I'm trying to move everything, get everything dusted, I have somewhere to put the things to get it out of the way. Especially since this room isn't huge. Um, but more than it not being huge, it had a lot of big furniture items, which made it a little bit more difficult to maneuver around. You will notice I'm not going under her bed. It really just wasn't feasible for me to do something like that. Um, so I'm just trying to work around the areas to the best of my ability with the space we were working with. This woman was so sweet. You will notice, and if you've been following me for a while and remember my original hoarder series, in some videos you may see the owner helping, in some you may not. It is totally personal preference for the people I am helping. They are not required to be on film um, for me to get their help. Um, obviously, I am drawn to people with the stories in this situation, this being an older woman that... Um, on top of all her health issues, she still takes care of her grandchildren on a regular basis. Like, she is pretty impressive considering how hard it is for her to get around and get stuff done. I was very excited to be able to help her because there's just certain things, like, that are difficult. Moving this furniture to get around the baseboards and really clean them, like, not really workable when um, you're dealing with oxygen tank on you 24 7 so i i was happy to be able to get in here um i remember when i got there she said she was really nervous to message me because she was embarrassed and i know that's really common for people to be embarrassed and 
I get it. And I always tell them, like, I am not here to judge you in any way. I am literally here just to help you. I was really thankful that her church community really urged her to message me um, saying, hey, this is like a sign from God. You've been saying you need the help. Here's a girl willing to come over, clean your house for your bedroom, bathroom for free, take advantage of it. And I'm really, really glad. I have met with doing my previous series and now this series some of the most amazing people to hear their stories because she wasn't in the room but she was literally right outside the door we were chatting and everything the the stories you hear from people and their history and everything like it brings so much joy to me to be able to help these people um that I never want anyone to feel embarrassed. We all get caught up in life and stuff gets crazy if it's health conditions or older age or children or whatever. Um, And I enjoy being able to go and help someone out in the best way I know how. I may not have a ton of different skills, but this is one way that I can help out. And I don't know, it helps the person, but it also brings a lot of joy and accomplishment to me. And I really enjoy doing this type of stuff. This is definitely a way if you are like, like, ah, I can't financially donate or do this or do that. Sometimes just figuring out one thing that you can help. Simple as this, it cost me a couple hours out of my day. I've been doing this once a week, um, going to somebody's house, for just like four or five hours and then going home. So it's not costing me any money. It's not costing me a lot of time. Um, I guess the only thing it's costing me is gas money. But I can totally do that. And in the long run, it helps people and it helps me. Like there is a self-gratification to doing stuff like this, which someone may think is selfish. But when you can do stuff to help people, It will definitely bring your mood up for the entire week. Knowing that you are able to do something to make someone else's life easier is so rewarding. I should take this time to introduce myself. If you guys are new here, I often get to talking and forget that you may be brand new and have no idea who I am or what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. Um, My name is Cambria. I am a mom of three, married to my husband, Bobby, for over 12 years. Uh, We just moved from Wisconsin to Florida after my husband retired from the military. And I did this helping hand slash hoarder series. I When I first started, it was my hoarder series. I have transformed it into a helping hand series. Um, Back in 2019, and then I got pregnant with my youngest daughter, who is now two, and then COVID hit. um, And I finally have started this series up again. It's something I am very passionate about. Um, I love doing it. And I'm just helping just giving just exactly what the title is is giving a helping hand um if i can go spend a couple hours and make someone's quality of life a little bit better um i am very happy to do it it's something i really enjoy like i said i did this years ago and so many of you guys have asked when i was going to start it up again and it just wasn't the right time wasn't the right time but now that i'm doing it again i'm absolutely loving that I just pulled the trigger and started doing it again. Um, I live in the Volusia County area, so I help people within about an hour of Volusia County. I don't do like far traveling. I might in the future, but at this point, it's more local and not like different states or living in Florida, (laughs) even in the same state could be a long drive.
Now, when it comes to cleaning products, especially when I'm going to other people's houses, I do not bring a lot because I'd have to be hauling it in and out of the different houses and things like that. Um, so I have a couple of my rider dies that I love using. Uh, my world's best window cleaner, I love that and I bring it everywhere. I also, for like cleaning 99% of things, I use a mixture of powder tide and pine saw. I love the way it cleans. I love the way it smells. Um, and then I do bring a couple depending. I always ask for photos when people message me so I know what I'm getting into. So like this situation, I knew there were some areas in her bathroom that were going to need harsher chemicals. So I brought some Clorox bleach spray as well as some vinegar. You're going to see me using that later. Um, but most of what I use is, like I said, that powder Tide and um, Pine Sol. It works amazing. And then obviously I try to move as much of the furniture as possible. I will say, and I noticed this with editing, that you will notice there's some areas that I missed. And I never noticed it until seeing it on camera. That is one thing when you are filming these, that there are times that you notice after the fact that you missed a spot that you never saw in person but on camera you definitely noticed it so i'm calling myself out ahead of time that if you notice that i missed somewhere that is why it's mainly like under furniture and stuff things that i literally couldn't see unless i got on the floor and looked under but since the camera was on the floor i definitely definitely noticed it The other thing you'll notice when I'm cleaning houses like this is I don't go in the same order as when I'm cleaning my own house. Um, I think that's kind of what I like about my channel is if you're in this position, I can hopefully help you. Um, or if you are have your life kind of more figured out, you have your routines and things like that. My cleaning strategy for my home compared to other people's home are very different. Um, in this situation, like you see me vacuuming a lot. Like I will normally vacuum the, a room a couple times because I like to get that initial layer. Um, but as I'm dusting, more dust comes down and flies around. So I end up dusting again at the end. Um, but it's just kind of how I do it here. Where if I was at my house, I would dust. And then I would work from ceiling to floor, not kind of all over the place where in this situation, I'm kind of all over the place knowing that I don't want to kick around the big stuff. So I try and vacuum first and last when doing houses like this. Also, another big thing to keep in mind is, like I said in the beginning, I spend three to four hours, or four to five hours is probably more accurate, um, where I go once a week to somebody's house to help them out. And like on this day, it was just the bedroom, those these three to four hours. I came back another day to work on her bathroom. Um, so if you have a big project, realize that it can take some time um three to four four to five how many hours i spent this day here is a good amount of time especially when you think that i don't have the distractions of if i was just home like when i'm home cleaning my house i'm not just cleaning i have two dogs three kids a husband um distractions like oh i'm just gonna sit on the couch for 10 minutes and take a break where here i don't really have that i would take I think during this whole time, I think I took about a 10 minute break where I just called Bobby, checked on the kids, things like that. Um, but most of the time it was just cleaning. So 
I think it's good to set a realistic expectation that these projects are not easy. They do take a lot of time, but you can definitely get it done if you pace yourself and then also set up these realistic expectations. I do also say it's good to start in one corner of the room and work your way around. That way you see the progress. Often when I'm talking to people, the biggest thing is, is they jump from space to space and it's really easy to lose that motivation because it feels like you got nothing done, but really you got a lot done, but you got a lot done all over the place. So I like to start in one corner, that way I can visually see the progress and then I stay motivated to keep moving forward. One thing I do do often though is if there's certain things that need to be done um, before I come back, I often will set aside projects for the homeowner to tackle um, till I come back the following week. So even though you don't always see the homeowners in the videos, don't think that they're not helping at all. Um, they are often helping. Actually, I was helping someone new this past week. Um, you're going to see that in a couple weeks from now. But me just being there helping her got her and her son motivated to get even more done. And they were like busting out the kitchen because sometimes you just need that someone to talk you through it. Um, she was talking about different things that she was struggling with and I was able to give her like ideas from a mom to another mom of how I handle stuff and I could just see one the excitement that this stuff was getting done and she was able to get it done um, but just that motivation to keep moving I was excited because she even messaged me that evening was like I'm gonna keep messaging you as I get more and more stuff done in the house um, to keep me accountable and I love that I love seeing that not only did I help in an area but had also like given her that kick in the butt to to clutter and organize even more I do try and take as much of the artwork off the wall as possible, but I am short, <laughs> so getting some of these was not possible, so I just tried to dust them down. I do bring a ton of microfiber cloths and different mop heads when I'm doing these projects because I think it's really, really important to constantly switch out my mop heads, especially since I'm doing the floor and the ceiling, not ceiling, floor and the walls but then also the microfiber cloths to constantly be changing them out and making sure I'm working with as clean of a space as possible because otherwise I feel like I'm just pushing the dust around instead of actually picking it up. Another big thing to keep in mind is I feel like it's really easy with the l world we live in nowadays with social media and everything to feel like that if you can't get do something to perfection, you just won't do it. Like it's very overwhelming when you see these Pinterest worthy houses and these perfectly manicured people that it's like, well, why do I even bother? Because I can't do that. Um, and I want to remind you that it's better to have progress than perfection. Like I am not perfect in any way. Um, I am very proud of myself because I have grown over the years. There's certain things that people have said to me or done that years and years ago would have destroyed me, especially being here on social media. People are cruel, very cruel. Um, but growing to realize that I'm not perfect, but I'm okay with that. 
I work to be a better person. I work to try and keep my home to the best quality that I can and that my house doesn't have to be Pinterest worthy. Um, It doesn't have to be like every other person. I personally don't have to be Pinterest worthy because I just, I can't keep up with that. I'm not doing my hair and makeup every day. I'm just not that type of girl. Um, It's coming to that realization brings a lot of peace to your life. So if I can, if you can take anything out of today's video, it's about progress. It's not about perfection. So don't be afraid to start something because you don't think you can make it perfect because perfection is boring. And who wants to be boring? You know I love it. Love and hate romantic sin. Fire and ice gone with the wind. You know I love it. So I was really hoping that I could move this TV cabinet, but it was a beast. So I just did my best to dust around it, mop around it, because there was no way I was moving that thing on my own. It was it was massive, um, obviously solid wood by the weight of it. So that's ended up staying in the corner. Uh, and then you'll also see later on that there is a dresser that's her husband that I didn't move that either. There was a bunch of stuff on it and I knew the second I moved it, it would be all over the place and I was not about to make a even bigger mess. That would not be good at all. And she told me not to worry about it either. She had asked her husband to clean up his dresser. He didn't have the time to get it done. So she's like, don't worry about it. We'll handle it. So I just worked around the things to get as much of it as I could. But once again, it's progress, not perfection, just progress. So hopefully you all had a fantastic Christmas. We really had a good Christmas. Like this year was really, really nice. I didn't pick up my camera once. (laughs) If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that like I was radio silent on Instagram. Um, And we just really enjoyed our time together as a family. And it was really, really nice. We did Marco Polo, Bobby's parents. Um, as the kids were opening their presents and stuff, but otherwise we just opened presents in the morning. We had breakfast and then the kids got to play. They loved it because they got to play with all their new outside toys right away. It has been chilly in Florida, like really chilly, but still warm enough that they could bundle up and go outside and play. And they loved that. Um, later in the evening, my aunt and uncle and mom and dad came over, Um, And I made Christmas dinner and everything, but it was a really, really nice Christmas. And I'm super excited. You're not going to see this for a little while. Um, I'm actually doing this voiceover Monday night and tomorrow, which is Tuesday, you guys are seeing this video. But tomorrow we are getting our new windows. So I have been working and busting my butt all day to take down Christmas because they can't have all the stuff by the windows with putting in new windows. And my thought was, well, if I'm taking down all the Christmas in the windows, I might as well. It just, that snowball effect. You guys have heard me talk about this a lot lately, but as I was getting started, I'm like, well, I might as well do this and I might as well do that. So that has been me all day running around so that we can get our new windows put in. But I am so excited for them to go in. The windows in our house are, I'm pretty sure original and This is going to be such a drastic change. One, they'll be clean because these windows are old enough. It's like impossible to get them completely clean. Oh, and this is the clip where I can tell I didn't get all the dust, which definitely bugs me. But like I said, there is no way of me seeing that unless I was like looking under on my belly, which I was not. My camera was, but I was not. Um, But yeah, we're getting our windows in today. I am really 
really excited um and yeah you guys will get to see those soon i'm a little like i'm really curious about what the front window in our house is gonna look like because right now it's like a bay window with i don't know a bunch of trim work um but that's not really something they can do other if we paid someone to put modern windows in but in that style, it would have cost us way more money than we can afford. So we're just putting in a normal bay window, and I'm excited to see how it looks. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't take away too much character of the house, because I do love that window. But I also know, for energy efficient wise, it is definitely losing a lot of heat in the winter and a lot of coolness in the summer. So it will be definitely a lot better to have the new windows. I wanna write my wrongs. Never thought they would do such harm You got so many reasons spinning in your head That's why you left mm. Indispensable pain in your chest Leave us for the best or you would break So on top of Christmas being done, we also have New Year's coming. I am curious if you guys have any big plans for the New Year's. I'm not someone that does a bunch of like New Year's resolutions, um, but I do like like starting fresh. It's always a good way to like, okay, let's reset the house, let's reset this. Um, but it's crazy looking back at this year. This has been such an insane year. We started the year in Wisconsin. Ended up moving to Florida after the kids were done with school, renovated this house almost completely, and now we are already going into 2023. Like, 2022 has been such a crazy year. So much has gone on. Um, I'm really excited to see what 2023 brings. I'm excited about it, and I get anxious with New Year's also, but I am very ready to see what goes on from here especially with this helping hand series i love this series and i cannot wait to meet all the new families as i go through the year trying to help as many as possible Now, I wish this fan would have been one of the first things I did, but the fan was one running and I completely forgot till literally right before I was done that I wanted to clean this fan off. So I'm glad I remembered before I left for the day because um, it definitely needed a really good cleaning and it wasn't something she could really get at. So I got up here. This is definitely something that if you're looking to do a deep clean on your bedroom, this is where I would start is on the ceiling fan but like I said sometimes it doesn't happen I'm not perfect sometimes I forget things and I'm just glad that I remembered before leaving for the day wait a second I don't need you then why so settled I miss with you still it feels just like I'm waiting for something better Wait a second I wanna stay up late with my heart in your head Maybe stay too much cause you don't understand You got me gone You don't understand You got me gone But sometimes I might be a bit selfish When you wake too humble Might be overzealous And then I always like when I am done done to do a quick vacuum once again, a quick mop, and then leave. Just kind of mop and vacuum my way out. So I did it in sections. I mopped this side of the bed, 
or vacuumed and mopped this side of the bed and then did the front area and then the side area and just worked my way out of the house for that day. Like I said, I only do it once a week um, for a couple hours. So I knew I could come back the next weekend and help her in the bathroom, which will be coming up right after these clips. I did put the whole cleaning in one video because just having the bathroom in a different one um, would have been really short. And I know you guys enjoy these longer videos. By the magic of editing, we are into the bathroom. It is the next week. <laughs> um, at first glance, this bathroom is not that bad, but there were some areas like the grout lines and everything that really needed a good scrubbing. This faucet needed, or shower head, really needed good cleaning. But this is why I ask for photos when people message me, is this kind of gave me an idea. I knew I wanted to bring vinegar and a plastic bag. And the first thing I did was put the vinegar on the shower head. That way it had as much time as possible for the vinegar to break up that lime scale and calcium. And then I just got to work emptying out the bathroom as much as I could. That way I could get in here and dust as much as I could and clean it all. Um, you're also gonna see here in a minute that I took my Clorox bleach spray. If you ever have this like black mold buildup around your shower, if you take this spray right here and then toilet paper or paper towel, something, and have it go along the edges, that just helps the product to stay in place instead of like running away and not being able to do its job. Biggest thing with most cleaning products is allowing it the time to do its work. It is really important with like vinegar or this Clorox spray is to give it its time. It makes a really, really big difference. And this got up most of the discoloration. So it worked really, really well. But it was another thing that I did this pretty much first thing. That way it had as much time to work as possible. Once again, when it came to the majority of this cleaning, I used a bucket of pine saw and powdered Tide um, to dust a lot of the stuff. Any of the artwork, the light fixtures, the shelves, um, anything like that. That is where I use that product. Um, but I did also bring some, oh, what is it called? It's the Power Paste from Scrub Daddy. I really enjoy the power paste stuff. It works really, really well. Um, kind of like using a barkeeper's friend or the pink stuff. I feel like a lot of those products work very similar to each other. So I brought that along and you're going to see that worked so well by the grout line, by the shower. Definitely a like good product to have in your arsenal of cleaning supplies. And yes, I know I don't wear gloves. <laughs> I get a lot of backlash from that in my videos. Um, I prefer not to wear gloves. I prefer to just wash my hands on a regular basis rather than gloves. I feel like they always get in the way. Um, but yes, I know, I know I'm going to get the backlash from it, but it's just something. I have gone to places where I felt it necessary to wear gloves. Um, but it's very rare that that'll, it, that something's so dirty that I'm like, oh, I need to wear gloves. I often feel like washing my hands regularly will do the same thing. One other thing though, I want to bring up, um, is when cleaning, you have to be very, very aware of your cleaning products and not mixing them. 
Um, I make sure that I rinse areas really well and don't mix my products. Um, I see now, especially on TikTok right now, and it's scary to me, these people that will dump a million different things in their bathtubs or their toilets or all over the place and don't know what they're doing. It's really easy to mix the wrong chemicals and create a deadly fume. So do yourself a huge favor and when you're cleaning, make sure to educate yourself on the things that should or should not be mixed. Um, I have a good idea of things that should not be mixed and I make sure that if I'm using one back to back, they, I rinse it down with water really, really well so I'm not actually mixing the two products. I just saw another video the other day on TikTok and there was just so many products this girl was dumping into her bathtub and I'm like, I there's no way that all of those products should be mixed together. Like, it was terrifying to me. And I have heard so many horror stories of people that have literally ended up dead. Um, and it's usually bathrooms because people will mix different stuff in the bathrooms and it creates a fume and they don't know it till it's too late. So my warning and advice to you, another not great thing about social media is lack of education is do not mix products if you're not 100% certain that they can be mixed. All right, so talking about cleaning supplies that shouldn't be mixed, the one that comes to my mind that is the most common that people don't realize shouldn't be mixed is vinegar and bleach. Vinegar and bleach should not be used combined. Um, so you saw me put the vinegar in that baggie, but I do not open that baggie until all the walls have been scrubbed down and rinsed down because I am using the Clorox bleach on the walls and the floor. That can make a chlorine gas that is, like I said, deadly. So definitely do your research, but if you think of anything, bleach and vinegar, never mix the two. If you're doing laundry and you use vinegar as a fabric softener like I often do, don't do it if you are adding bleach to your load. So just a little PSA. <laughs> I get very like passionate on stuff like that. Um, I don't know if you guys watch, but I, Bobby and I enjoy watching Below Deck. And there was a season that a girl did that. And she was like one of the cleaning girls. And she mixed bleach and vinegar. And they ended up having to completely evacuating and airing out the boat for a couple of hours because the whole cabin um, reeked of this gas mixture. So this is where I ended up going in with the power paste. This, like I said, worked really, really well to get this whole area cleaned up. Um, it was very discolored and a lot of buildup and grime. They did have a dog, so like my house, dog fur can get everywhere. Um, and this power paste worked absolutely amazing. At the end, I show the before and afters of these different areas, um, and they were pretty awesome. I am someone that really enjoys the pretty dramatic before and afters. So I try to share as many of those with you guys as possible.
to me, taking down this vinegar baggie was super satisfying. Um, I tried to show as much as possible a close up of just, you could literally see the calcium and buildup that had worked its way off floating in the baggie. It's kind of gross, but also like really satisfying. If you deal with hard water, vinegar is your best friend. Um, actually, vinegar and Dawn dish soap work absolutely phenomenal so after i took that down i gave it a quick scrubbing also scrubbed the um, faucet because that had some water spots on it and gave it a really good rinse and it looked shiny and practically brand new so vinegar on your sink faucets your showers anything like that that can get that calcium build up um it it takes a lot of the scrubbing out, which I don't know about you, but if I can have a product do most of the work and I don't have to spend forever scrubbing, that is a total win. Um, and then just quickly going through refolding her towels, trying to get it just as I put stuff back into her bathroom. Um, All right, now just quickly throwing back up the shower curtain. So this shower curtain was actually new to her, um, but I helped her the previous week hang it up. Um, she had bought it and I told her I would help her. So the shower curtain and everything is brand new. It is super pretty, but now we're gonna go to all the before and afters. These are my favorite parts are to show you guys what it looks like once all the hard work's done and it's my favorite part like that's the most satisfying part about cleaning but i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did give it a thumbs up share it with a friend leave a comment those are all things that really really help out my channel um and if you're new here i would love if you would subscribe but i will see you next time bye